What is up everyone? I am Bishop Roller and you are watching both an update video and my analysis of my team for the MDL Season 3. Yeah, I, you guys have no idea what the MDL Season 3 is, so I'm going to talk about that in the update. But first off, I'm so happy to be back. It's been so long and I can finally start making videos again. I'm so sorry for just disappearing without saying anything. So much shit was going on in my in my life. A uh, bunch of good stuff, a bunch of kind of bad things, but mainly really good things. And I'm just hype as hell to be back. Uh, anyway, why was I gone for so long? I said I'd wait for the first drops to come in and other tiers to start existing after Sun and Moon's release. Well, I was completely mista mistaken about how it works when a new when new games come out as. Um, PU won't exist until June. And I can tell you right now, I randomized the first four Pokemon for Road to 802 already. And that's still going on, that will still be happening. And none of them are in PU. None of them are even in NU. None of them are even in RU. Actually, none of them are even in UU either. However, I, and as, as such, I would be easily be able to play them right now if I wanted to. I don't though, because it's in random order. So let's say I were to finish these four Pokemon. Uh, and then I am two weeks further because of the two a week, of course. Uh, and I need to do a fifth one. But that fifth one just would just happen to be, I'm just saying something random, Chatot. Actually, wait, Chatot isn't PU. I'm going to say Pidgeot then. Pidgeot is 100% certainly going to be PU. And let's say I randomize it to that. What do I do? Do I play Pidgeot in... What will most likely be RU as the lowest tier then? Or do I stop in the middle of the series? I don't want to do either of those two things. So I'm waiting until PU starts actually continuing Road to 802. And that will be in June. I'm still really excited to start it. I might start one week before that because I know that I have uh, four Pokemon that work before PU exists. So it's fine. But for now... No road to 802. What will be happening though on this channel is MDL Season 3, which is a Little Cup draft league that I'm in. I've gotten really involved in the Little Cup uh, community, the smoking community for Little Cup, over the past few months that I was gone. And I have learned the tier and gotten better. I'm still not exactly good, but I've definitely gotten better at this tier. And... One of the people in the community asked me to join his draft league, which I did, which is called the MDL. Uh, the guy who asked me is called 067 Jocks. He makes the videos and I will definitely link his channel in the description. We have finished the draft and he has done a full draft analysis with some with another player of the league who is named Feel. Uh, that, that video will also be directly linked in the description below. Uh, and this spreadsheet that you're seeing right now will also be linked in the description below. Everything will be linked. So I will be analyzing my team in after I'm done with the updates and all videos, every battle that I'll be playing in the MDL will be uploaded here. MDL, of course, stands for Mighty Draft League, I think. I'm not even 100% sure of that, but I'm pretty sure it's Mighty Draft League. Um, so yeah, outside of that, uh, 067 Jocks is also doing a uh, series on his channel called Meme in LC. Uh, there's a good chance that I will be showing up on at least one of those videos, quite possibly more, but so far I haven't yet. So definitely go check out that series, it's really fun, we're using a bunch of random bullshit in Little Cup. Kind of similar to what I'm doing, but he's actually 100% memeing his way through these battles, and some of the teams are so shit, but they do, do work for some reason. Anyway... That's pretty much what's going on for me. So you have the MDL to look forward to on this channel. Meme and LC will be a thing on 067 Jocks' channel. And Road to 802 will be starting in June. So that's it for the update. Now what I will be doing here in this uh, video rest will be simply be analyzing my team for the MDL. The MDL is a draft league in which you are with two people, per, two coaches per team. I am paired up with Alterio van Sweep. Personally, uh, he is a pretty good guy. He, we work together to build this team a lot. Though he was never only ever available on a weekend, so drafting was awkward, but we did. And I think we have a pretty solid team setup. Now, we had a really awkward spot as we were the second uh, drafter, drafter. 
And we started with our captain, and our captain had to be B tier. As you can see, I started off drafting Alolan Vulpix. Uh, and I did that for a very specific reason, considering my draft spot. I knew that we had to draft S tier as our second pick, or, well, anything below, but we would get our S tier pick immediately afterwards. But because it's a snake for my draft, I would be second to last to pick. So I wasn't going to be able to get my best, my first choice, and pro probably not even my second or third choice, as my S pick. So I wanted to pick someone as my captain that would be able to support any Pokemon very well. That's why I went with Alolan Vulpix. This thing's Aurora Veil is so good. Everything that can set up, everything appreciates this thing's Veil. It is so amazing. I love this Pokemon. It is just so good. Any Anything can set up behind Veil. The frailest set of sweepers in the world can set up behind Veil. And it is the best thing. I'm really excited to use this Pokemon. I have so many things planned to do with this thing. Oh, oh my god. I, so many sweeps are going to be happening this, uh, this season of the MDL. And they're hopefully all going to be mine. Anyway, so we go to the S tier picks. I knew I had a lot of picks. I wanted something that could at least set up behind the screens. Because yes, a bulky mon would appreciate the screens. Or the veil, I mean. But setup sweepers appreciate it way, way more. And I went with Pumpkaboo all. Now, at first I wanted Rufflet. Because Rufflet is a fucking monster. Setting up bulk ups behind veil would be absolutely disgusting. And I'd probably just win every single game just by doing that. Of course, Rufflet went round one because... Birds are fucking ridiculous in draft leagues. There are like two good bird switches in the entire game, and uh, it's like Onyx. Onyx is the good is the bird switching and bird switching and LC. Some other rock types can, but Rufflet superpower. Dodo was banned for the exact same reason because Jump Kick is so ridiculous in combination with it. It's just a knockoff. It's it's a Bronzer or Honedge. Way too customized, or not even really customizable, way too good for the league. So Dodua went, went. Rufflet is an S tier, and Rufflet got picked up as the first Mon. Of course, I knew that was going to happen. My second choice was Pawnyard, because setting up an SD behind Veil could be significantly threatening. It uh, prevents opponents from defogging the screens away, as it just gets a free SD if you do that. And has decent synergy with the alone Vulpix uh, type-wise as well, somewhat. Like, it, it, that was would have been quite nice to get Ponyard. Also got picked up. So then I was thinking, hmm, maybe I want to... Uh, Mianfu, pass some short answer to teammates if I could pick it up later. Also got picked up. Uh, Ponyta was an option because see Sunny Day behind the, the screens. Didn't get picked up, I picked it up way later. I decided not to go with Ponyta. Mudbray was an option, also didn't get picked up, and ended up deciding on Pumpkaboo all. Because in this league, when you draft Pumpkaboo, you get every, th every single form, all four of them, and that makes it A plus tier. I didn't go with an S tier Pokemon, because the only S tier Pokemon that was available at that point was, I believe, Fungus, and I preferred Pumpkaboo. Um, Pumpkaboo, of course, has four forms, a small, average, large, and super one. Small and Super are easily the two best ones, because Super hit, uh, is really bulky, nice HP stat, can switch into so many things, it's a hard stop for pretty much every water type that doesn't carry Ice Beam. It's just a nice bulky mon in general, and really appreciates Vulpix's Veil to make it even bulkier. On the other hand, Pumpkin was small, hit 16 speed, which is quite nice for LC standards, though it's definitely still below average, it's still quite fast. And it gets its new toy Z Trick or Treat from Generation 7. And that is going to be amazing to play around with. Because behind Veil, setting that up is really, really easy. Like, so stupidly easy. As uh, Small still has some decent natural bulk. So it, it's not a problem at all. And then you go to town and you just take lives. Oh my god, people are... I'm going to have so much fun using this thing. As you have to prepare for Pumpkaboo XL, because if you don't, it's going to wall your entire team. But you also have to prepare defensively for Pumpkaboo Small, because otherwise it destroys your entire team. Like, you need to prepare both offensively and defensively very extensively for Pumpkaboo, and that's why I went with it. 
Because of its insane versatility, I love this mod. Oh, this is so nice, so nice, so nice. I love this. Uh, next up, I went with some bulk in the Spritzy. Uh, Spritzy makes it a lot easier for my Alona Vulpix to set up Veil multiple times because of Wish. Wish is a great tool to have, in my opinion, in a draft league. Because being able to heal up any teammate is amazing. It makes my Pumpkaboo less reliant on Synthesis, which is, of course, lowered in Hail. It makes uh, both, uh, like, my entire team less weak to status because of aromatherapy. And, of course, it can set up Calm Mind behind Veil, which is really, really neat. This thing is just incredibly bulky, stops fighting types dead, dead in their tracks so they don't carry Poison Jab. Which they probably will do because I have a Spritzy, but whatever. It's still a really good mon. And can be legitimate. <laughs> it's a very good defensive threat uh, to on your team. And yeah, in general, there's a very nice Pokemon. I'm really happy I got it. Now for the Pokemon that I am convinced will get the most kills on my team. In Jox's team analysis, he and Phil said Carvana would be the Pokemon on my team to get the most kills. I disagree. Clampearl will be the Pokemon to get the most kills on my team. This thing has the item Deep Sea Tooth, of course, which doubles its special attack, I believe. Maybe it's times 1.5. Anyway, it raises it. And it has Shell Smash. That combination is monstrous. Its special attack becomes like 50 or 60 or some bullshit like that after a Shell Smash. It is absolutely mental. And I'm so excited to use this thing behind Veil. Because it's... Clampo's problem is that it really, really struggles... To actually set up that Shell Smash. At which point it becomes a, ridicu a ridiculous monster. But behind Veil, that's not a problem anymore. This thing is so, 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 so scary. And I really want to sweep with this. Multiple times in this, uh, in this uh, series of matches. Because, of course, Water Stab is mandatory. Shell Smash is mandatory on, on uh, Clamperol. But other than that... What is mandatory? Like... Ice Beam is useful if they have a lot of bulky grasses, but your sheer power of water type moves can also just bust through those. And then you have HP Grass, which is most common as fourth move. But if your opponent doesn't have any good bulky waters, you can also just run HP Rock or some bullshit to get past something you need. I, I love this Pokemon. It's so good in Draftly because it's so difficult to prepare for already. And now that they just have a super limited pool of Pokemon... And I know that pool fight. It's it's an amazing combination. I am really stoked about getting the Alola Pix Clamperol combo. And I'm not even done. Because after this, I I draft the second most threatening setup sweeper after it's done setting up in Little Cup. Magby. Magby is similar to Clamperol in that after a belly drum, it destroys lives. It is, it's 19 speed, which is really important for my team. I needed that speed. And this is exactly what I needed here. This thing is super fast. It's super hard after a belly drum. And with that fire punch or the thunder punch and the mock punch and flare blitz or whatever you need, this thing will take some lives if it sets up. Do not let this thing set up. Do not have a team that is super weak to mag me because you will lose to me. I will put everything in my power to make this thing sweep once. I love this Pokemon. I've always wanted to use it. I have used it to some extent. Not a lot though. And here it is. It's going to town. It's taking some wins. I guarantee it. And well, now my team really needs some spinner. I, this was essentially the moment where I said, okay... I have four setup sweepers, it's enough, I'm going to get some support for them. So first off I pick Sandshrew, it's a spinner, it's a rock setter, it's a knockoff user, all really important for a team, and it's all in one package. Perfect Pokemon, I love this thing, really happy I got it. I was not expecting to get it, I was almost certain that it was going to be drafted before me because I had the second to last pick in this round again, but it didn't. I got it for free, yay, absolutely amazing. I'm really happy I managed to pick this up. I was surprised that it was still there because it's a really, really good bond for this low in the tier. Like, 
it's slow, yes, but it's a ground type, which is always neat. Uh, it doesn't face too much competition from things like Drill Burp, because those are way more expensive. It's a great mon. I'm surprised no one else got this, but I'm happy. I'll take it. I'll gladly take it. Really good roll compression. I much less pressure on my other ones to do things. Nice Pokemon. Now, I had Magby. I had Volpix. I had was Rock Week. So I'm gonna get another Defogger. Rowlet. Rowlet Defox, as I said. Nice. But Rowlet does one other thing. And that's Baton Pass. And you might be like, oh, Baton Pass isn't too scary if it's only one Mon that can pass. I agree. That's not that bad. Unless that Mon is gonna set up three Swords Dances behind an Aurora Veil and pass that shit to anything. Or even more fun, set up three nasty plots and three swords dances, or like six curses or whatever behind Veil, and just pass whatever you want. This was an oversight by the other coaches. I honestly think people forgot Rowlet existed. But I didn't, because I wrote this thing's analysis. I know what this thing does, and how it works, and how to use it. I am easily the most experienced Rowlet player in the league, and maybe even in... Well, uh, I'm in most of LC, I'll probably be the most experienced player with Rowlet. And I got this thing. No one even attempted to stop me. It even completes the Firewater Grass score with Clamper on Magby. It's perfect. It's such a good pick, and I'm so surprised no one stopped me from getting this. But I'll take it. I Watch this thing. Prepare for it. It's gonna destroy you. Completely. And utterly, like, <laughs> you you can't stop this thing. Anyway, next is Piplup. Um, I wanted something else that could set rocks and defog them. I wanted the bulky water because I lacked that. I have Spritzy to keep it healthy, which is fine. It's a good, it's an okay, man. I wasn't, this was very much a pick where I got sniped because I wanted Growlithe here. I didn't want to be forced to draft Ponyta as my first free pick, because the way it works, you had no points. You were absolutely 100% free in drafting whatever the damn, whatever you damn well feel, felt like drafting. And I knew that, and I wanted some uh, some ridiculous offensive threat as my final, as my first free pick, because I was going to get that first free pick, that second free pick, I guess, because uh, Viper and Field drafted before me, but. I really, really wanted uh, something else there, but Growlithe got sniped. And I was so, so sad. Because I had to go for Pony. My team is ridic was ridiculously weak to a fighting type that could uh, run poison and dark coverage. That sounds awfully specific, but like every fighting type gets poison jab and knockoff. I, I straight up lost to that, so I had to draft Pony. And now for this pick, well, Piplup was just a filler mon. I, I didn't really want anything else than Groundleth in this slot. I don't even know if Piplup ever comes to any match. And I'm very sorry, but I... Piplup was a filler mon. It's good, it's okay roll compression. And the bulky waters are always nice. But I don't know what I'm gonna do with this thing. Anyway, as I talked about Pony... Ponyta is great Pokemon, can set up with Sea Sunny Day, can set up with just Sunny Day, is really fast, has the flame body, can burn things, just nice combo, stops fighting types from destroying my entire team, unless they have rock coverage or are timber. Uh, but Mianfu can't run stab and poison and dark and rock and U-turn and everything at once against my team. All on one slot, as well as Taunt, it's not gonna fit in Taunt, it's on there as well, like... That's not gonna happen. Punchum has no space for uh, Rock-type coverage, because it then either, either needs to give up uh, Parting Shot or Sword Dance. Neither of which it wants to do. And any other rock uh, Fighting type is completely irrelevant and not a threat anyway. So Pony does a nice job of stopping these things from the entirely destroying my team. Which is neat. I still definitely have a weakness to that combo of Fighting Poison Dark Rock. Which Mianfu can run. But there's only one Mianfu, so I'll be fine. I really think so. 
And now for the Carvana. I said before that Jocks and Feel thought I would this thing would get the most kills on my team. I disagree, but they're not 100% wrong. Carvana is a legitimate threat. Beh its main problem is its ridiculous vulnerability to priority. Because it's so stupid frail. But that's no longer the case if you set up an Aurora Veil. Then it's suddenly actually sorta bulky. That's a secret that I should not have said. <laughs> I think people understood. But this thing can be so threatening. If it gets one or two speed boosts, it can seriously just plow through an entire team if their coverage users are dead. And there are only so many coverage users. Like, there is not like any a team is going to have like four or five coverage users. They're going to have one, maybe two in their entire draft roster. At least as long as that, that can hit. Carvana, because I know one team that has a Volpix with Quick Attack, a Meowth with Feint and Fake Out, which is significantly threatening, and a Tier 2 guy with Aqua Jet. I mean, yes, it has all that, but does Tier 2 guy give a fuck about Volpix's Quick Attack and Tortuga's Aqua Jet? I don't think so, man. I don't, really don't care. That Meowth is fucking scary as fuck, though. Oh, well. Carvana is a very powerful mon that can really uh, plow through teams, has priority in Aqua Jet, has Psychic Fangs for its coverage. Great mon, really happy that I managed to get it. All around just really, really nice. Uh, next up is Mankey. I wanted a Defiant user. And I wanted the Fighting type. Obviously, as I said, Ponyard was gone. I already had Piplup, which is the third Defiant user in LC, but I'm not gonna bring Defiant Piplup. I'm sorry, I I really want to do it, but I really don't want to do it. <laughs> I'm so torn on this. We'll see later, though. First up is the Menki. The fighting types are really scary. A lot of great coverage. XST U-turn is awesome. Hard, pretty hard to switch into. And that the fighting ability is really nice. Because if you defuck my Aurora Villeway, you are going down to a Menki sweep. Be careful. Also, uh, in Phil and Jox's video, they talked about me defog my own uh, Vill away with Rowlet and Piblop. That's not how defog works. Defog only removes screens from your opponent's side of the field. I'm like 99% sure of that. I should have looked it up beforehand because I wanted to talk about this. But I'm like 99% sure that's how it works. So don't rely on me defogging to remove my screens. Brick break or Psychic Fangs them if you really need to. Defog them and give my Mankey a free attack boost. I'm fine with all that. And now we need to talk about the elephant in the room, which is this Zuba that has been flapping his wings the entire time. You might be thinking, why in the world does this team have a Zubat? Well, Zubat really hard checks grass and fighting types. And you might be uh, and bug types too. But you might be wondering, what the hell are you doing? Pony that does that. Yes, Ponyta does that. You're right. Perf completely right. Absolutely 100% right. That is... Unless it's called Timber. Because Timber has guts. And when he gets burned because of Ponyta's flame body... I get destroyed. If I didn't have this Zubat. Because Timber does not have the move slots to also deal with this Zubat. He, can, he wants Drain Punch to, well, stab. Hits Volpix, hits... Not much on my team, but he, he, he's gonna want Stab. I, he's not gonna want no Stab Timber. And def, also not Mark Punches, only Stab Timber, which is a second move he wants. Because it, it's an important tool to stop Carvana and Clampro and Magby and... Pumpkaboo, uh, not Pumpkaboo, in their tracks when sweeping. It's really important. He's gonna want Knock Off, because it's his only way of dealing with... Pumpkaboo XL. And you might be like, what if he runs Ice Punch? Ice Punch is not to it KO Pumpkaboo XL. Don't worry there. He's gonna want Poison Jab. Otherwise, Pretty Hard Walls it. And now, because I drafted this Zubat, this is why this is such an important pick. He needs Ice Punch to break it. Because I picked this Zubat, Timber can't destroy my entire team. I will always have one or two Pokemon that either wall it. Or it's gonna lack stab. One of the two. And if you lack stab, I don't give a fuck about you anymore. 
Because then Pokemon like Magby, like Sandshrew, like Mankey, like Piplup, like Clamperl, do not care about you anymore because you ha can't hit them super effectively. And if you like Stab, you're not powerful enough. That is what I'm counting on this Zubat to do. It's gonna be brought once, it's gonna be brought against Tim uh, Timber's team, and it's gonna hard stop, completely stop the Timber from destroying my team, which it totally would have done otherwise. I saw that weakness, that's why Zubat is here, and that's why it exists. And I'm fine with them knowing that too. If they know Zubat is coming, they might be a little bit more prepared for it, but then they prepare for Zubat, so I don't really care there, honestly. Anyway, overall my team definitely still weak to fighting, I, uh, to fighters, because yeah, I have a lot of ways to th theoretically check fighters, but they carry so much coverage and it's so obnoxious. I also have absolutely no idea how I'm going to stop a choice scarf Rufflet from destroying my entire team, but only one of those exists, so I'm fine. I think that's about it for me now, t now though. I'm really excited to be back. I hope you're excited to watch me play through the MDL with a bunch of cool coaches. Oh, I'm so happy that I'm back. Anyway, that's been it for me. I'm out. Peace.